hello Matthew, um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, so just a way to introduce this conversation and let me do an outline of who we are. So I am Amelia McCormick, I am the Visual Art Curator at the Royal Overseas League, um, a membership organisation that was founded in 1910 and have actively supported the arts for over 70 years. You are Matthew Burroughs. <laughs> You know, that's yeah, but for everybody else. You are Matthew Burroughs, a British artist who studied at Birmingham School of Art and the Royal College of Art in London. You're a painter who also creates sculpture and is exhibited all over the world, won many awards for your work and shares your knowledge through teaching as well. You also founded the Artist Support Projects in 2008 and the mm -hmm. Artist Support Pledge, an initiative that was a direct um, reaction to the COVID-19 pandemic this year. And what led me to actually get in touch with you was the fact that you're also one of the Rosal alumni artists working with us in 2000. And sadly, because I am working from home with no access to our archives, I couldn't find any 20 year old photographs to share with you. <laughs> but, um, well. yeah, well, <laughs> um, I would also like to know more of what you did because I couldn't find that out either. So, um, Firstly, what was it that you did working with us at Rosal? Well, I, I won the uh, Royal Overseas League Travel Scholarship in 2000. And I spent, I think, about four or five weeks traveling around southern India, around Kerala, um, coaching all, all around that area, um, drawing and painting as I went, and then produced a series of uh, watercolours, some quite large in scale, sort of five foot, which is, is quite big for watercolours, um, based on the work I did in India for an exhibition at uh, Royal Overseas League. Uh, and I guess that must have been either 2000, 2001, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. I'll, I'll definitely look it up when I get back into the office and getting back to the archive. The reason I was looking through our list of alumni, so we've got the full list online of all the artists we've worked with. I knew it must have been one of the first years when we were doing the scholarships and the residencies. Um, but I actually wanted to see what everyone was working on. And especially at this time when obviously so much is going on, there's so much work that's being lost. I wanted to see if there's a way that we could be of any help to anybody as an organisation, even as simple as sharing people's work and putting links out to our audience. Um, but obviously when I went on your website and I saw the Artist Support Pledge and actually it just clicked because I've seen that hashtag all over Instagram um, and yeah it's such a great creative initiative I just had to get in touch and find out more about it so can you share some more information about that? Yeah I, I set up our support pledge on the 16th of March really in response to a series of messages from friends and colleagues that were telling me that exhibitions were closing um, or that their um, work was ending, things like teaching, tech work in galleries, museums. And I realized quite quickly that this was going to be really difficult for artists because most artists work in gig economies. Um, many artists work on the edge of their overdraft limits. So to go for potentially three, four months without an income and probably without any external um, support because it's unlikely that any kind of government support was going to cover artists. Um, I realised it was it was sort of a very drastic situation and I literally just sat at my dining room table and tried to write a list of what I thought my assets were. What could I do? What could I use to help alleviate the situation? And I came up with two answers and one was artwork because plenty of that and artists have plenty of that lying around. And the other one was um, a culture and a culture, this culture is a culture of trust and generosity. And it's something that I've developed as an idea since 2008 with artist support projects, which is a sort of peer mentoring support network, which works with established and mid-career uh, and establishing artists to help support uh, their creative endeavors, um, intellectually and practically um, throughout their career. I work small groups, normally meet sort of six times a year, two days at a time. And I've developed an, a sort of culture for this process, which is this idea that if you have an environment of where trust 
and generosity are implicitly the, the foundations of that environment, then creativity, um, debate around art and making art and creating opportunities for artists is much easier. So if you can be honest with one another, and if you are generous in your reply and your uh, and receiving debate and uh, critical uh, engagement with other artists, then it's much more fluid, it's much more positive, and it's much more active. So I literally just took this idea. I kind of thought, okay, trust and generosity, that's its culture. Our, our product, if you like, the thing that we can make money from is artwork. And then I literally spent the rest of the day just playing around with it. I just sort of thought, okay, how do you generate an economy quickly? So it's because it has to be today, yeah. you know, or that day or the next day. It couldn't be in three months' time or in a week's time. It had to be immediate. So I knew the entry point had to be really accessible, had to be really low. So I eventually came up with a two hundred pound um, entry level point. So I thought, okay, that's that's low enough that it's, it's well below my market value and a lot of artists' market value. So it's an act of generosity for myself and my peers to actually post work at that level. Um, but it's high enough that artists who perhaps are just starting out or maybe are just uh, graduated uh, or even amateurs, they, um, they can find a place within that. So the artists who are maybe more established can help support those artists. Because, and because that £200 is a threshold, nobody's allowed to charge more than that. It means that the economy drives very quickly. People buy art very rapidly. Now the point, there's a sort of an entry point at the £200 threshold, but there's also an exit point, if you like, where every time an artist reaches £1,000 of sales, they pledge to spend £200 of that £1,000 on buying another artist or artist's work. So that's the pledge. That's yeah. the artist support pledge. The moral contract, that you don't have to sign up for anything, mm -hmm. you don't have to sign anything, I don't police it. Um, but what it does is it forces a kind of, um, a sort of culture of support for one another. So the artists feel like they're not just, it's not just a sales platform, it's a culture of support. Mm -hmm. So it enables artists not only to make a living, but to take um, their job as patrons of their peers seriously. And that's a very compelling idea. Yeah. And it's such a, I don't want to say simple, because it's obviously very thought out and thorough. And, but it is such a nice thing in the way that, you know, what you said, it's, there's no forms to fill out. There's no hurdles to jump over to get involved. It's on Instagram with a hashtag. And I looked at the page this morning and there was 33,700 followers. I looked just before we talked today, like this afternoon, and there's 33,800 followers. So you've got another 100 in a few hours. Yeah, well, the followers, what's interesting with the followers is that the followers don't reflect the scale of the art support pledge. Mm -hmm. Not everybody who posts work is actually following it. And oh, that's okay. the thing that I realized very quickly at the beginning that I was getting, for the, about the first week or two, I was getting a message, sometimes two messages a second. 24 hours a day. So I realized this was in the, you know, this was going into the hundreds of thousands of people who were dealing mm. with it overnight within 24 hours. Yeah. Um, but at that point, it only had maybe a thousand followers. And what I realized quite quickly was that the, the ability for so, the message to go through social media wasn't necessarily linked with either a website or with the, with the Art Support Pledge account. Hmm. So what I do is I use the Artist Support Pledge account as a platform to, to disseminate information about how it works, what's going on, announcements for opportunities we have, awards, all the rest of it. Um, but actually, the movement itself actually operates outside of that, and it's much, much bigger. And that's the thing that sort of um, surprised me. I mean, now I think there's about 130,000 posts, um, and each hmm. of those individual posts can have up to 10 images. Yeah. And those images can be additions. So one post can be up to, depending on the price, can be up to about £20,000 for one post. Okay. So the, the economics of it are, are quite varied. You know, what's interesting is that one post can be worth anywhere between, say, £20 and £20,000. So mm -hmm. we've been sort of tracking the algorithms of who's making money, who's selling the most, 
uh, whether that's happening. And it's, it's actually really interesting to see how it spread across the globe within literally hours. It wasn't even days or weeks, it was in hours. And it's such a fascinating thing to think about that platform because Instagram is so often used to sell products and to sort of use the algorithms to manipulate sort of buying and I get recommended content that's perfect for me. Of course it is because they know me so well but be able to use those algorithms and just follow how it all works for something that's so generous and positive is fantastic to be able to use that as a tool. And, they, and as well for the buyers, they must be finding some amazing work from these artists. Have you had think, any of yeah, them I mean, get in touch? I've had men, I mean, I've had thousands of messages. <laughs> I think mean, that's sort of slowing down now because people are sort of figuring it out. But yeah. um, I still get many, 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 many a day. And <laughs> initially they were just from artists. And even within, I'd say, two days, I was getting messages from people saying, I've made more money in two days than I normally make in a month. I've paid my rent and, you know, I'm sorted for the next few weeks. And, and I didn't expect that at all. So that no. was, you know, a nice surprise. And not everybody, obviously, but a, a substantial amount of people. And then after a, probably about a week, I started getting messages from people who weren't artists but were buying the work. Mm. And they found the whole experience really uplifting because they had access to buying art that normally they wouldn't have access to very easily and fluidly. They didn't feel any pressure because there was no middleman. You, do, you go directly to the artist. Um, you know that nobody else is taking any money. So you know that your money is literally supporting that artist. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a sort of a level of reciprocal kind of bond between the buyer and the artist, which is very compelling to both the artist and to the collector. Um, mm -hmm. And what I found, you know, anecdotally from a lot of people who've contacted me, lots of collectors or, or people who started buying, who've never bought art before, is how much art they've been buying <laughs> because they just keep going back on it and saying, oh, well, I, I could buy that too. And some of yeah. it is, you know, it's not, it doesn't all, it's not all at 200 pounds. Some of it is 20, 30, 50 pounds. Mm. So, you know, you can take, you can take a risk on some things. It's oh, quite definitely. interesting. Well, if you're not buying your morning coffees and your commute, you know, that money can definitely go towards some artwork and helping an artist sort of pay their rent. Because, as you said, it's difficult times, but that's amazing that there's been so much generosity out there. And that it's been, you know, and as you said, immediately beneficial, not waiting three months for a grant, not, it's something that needed to happen straight away when obviously the unforeseen happened. So yeah, it's amazing that it's like caught on so much and how generous everyone's, everyone's been about it. And you've said, obviously, this is keeping you very busy, um, but are you still managing to make your own work at this time? <laughs> yes. Are you creating as well? I, I, I haven't managed to do any painting yet. Um, I'm, I've been preparing the studio bit by bit each day to, to get back in there. And I've, I've been doing some drawing to prepare myself, um, but for the first, probably the first three weeks I was working 18 hours a day I could have just stopped and walked away of course but um, it, you know it, it was it was generating so many opportunities that I just had to respond to them yeah uh, and then over the last two weeks I've managed to pretty much get um, the information out there in a way that it, it sort of manages itself a little bit now it sort of ticks over pretty much on its own but every day, there are new opportunities come in, new uh, ideas that come through. And so today I was approached by a charity who would like to work with us uh, in the next week. Because we, I, I, every couple of weeks I highlight a different charity and we get an artist to donate work. Oh, so we've just had um, Quentin Blake has donated a set of drawings made specifically for us to um, sell for Accentuate, which is an organisation that works with um, the deaf and disabled people and helping them in positions of leadership in the cultural sector but before that with hospital rooms so we're, we're looking at kind of charities that work with arts uh, with artists and the arts and healthcare generally mm. and that's another sector that's taken a big hit obviously with the marathon being cancelled and yeah. you know to be able to cross support like that is fantastic and again mm. sharing art that's right. I mean, it's partly because once I realised after a few days that people were actually not only, not everybody, but people were generating a reasonable income off it, the sense of goodwill 
was so huge. I thought, well, we need to we need to benefit from that. We need to be able to spread that out a little bit. So I thought, if we can actually then start supporting those charities that have been supporting us, so those mm -hmm. charities that work with artists have been helping artists within, especially the health sector. I thought, if we can spread our you know the, the economy that we've created across that sector too, then it's it's good for everybody. I've just okay. actually yesterday launched Art Support Place Framers, which is um, to a sort of separate hashtag where framers can can um, post their uh, their products, the rest of it. So the art people who are, who are buying work from artists for pledge can go there and get their services. So it keeps the framers busy um, busy as well because there's a lot yeah. of work being sold and it needs oh, framing. Definitely. Yeah, and that's another again an economy that with the galleries sort of canceling their shows. I know I actually know someone who works in a framers and their jobs are very much on hold at the moment. So to be able to redirect this sort of network to them, right. it's definitely, yeah. it's a huge economy. You don't realise what the knock-on effect is until obviously this all happens. No, well, I, I, I must admit, I, 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 when I first made the post, it was a sort of, it was an evening and I put it on it just sitting there watching television. And I woke up the following day and I was one off making the pledge. And I thought, oh, okay, I've done nothing but sleep. And every night, I've nearly generated a thousand pounds. And once I'm at the next sale, I then can give that to the next artist, give, you know, mm -hmm. 200 pounds to the next artist. I looked on the account, there was two artists that joined up at that point. And I thought, that's okay, I'll buy one of theirs, happy to do that. Um, and by lunchtime, I think there was something like 250. Oh, and then by the evening, you know, by the next morning, I think there was over a thousand. And then it was two, it was going up a thousand a day um, for the first few days. And, and that wasn't accounted for the fact that I knew, what I knew at that point, which was interesting, was that the, I knew the numbers were going to increase because I was getting an awful lot of messages from people who were saying, I'm going to do this, but they hadn't done it yet. And, and a lot of these people were, were established artists. They weren't. Yeah students or you know people who just left art school they were there were people who were out there mid-career people who who were doing it purely out of an act of generosity support their peers and all the rest of it mm -hmm. so I, I knew it was good it had you know at that point I was sort of trying to tell people this was going to this was bigger than it looked <laughs> no one was looking at yeah. the on the screen and not realizing that I was seeing a whole different set of numbers and how it snowballed and and as well, as you said, you know, people getting involved that necessarily don't need to get involved financially, but want to do it to support their peer, like all the other people within the network is absolutely amazing. And it's just such a generous sort of thing and such a great initiative as well. Yeah, that's the thing that's often, it's actually in a way been quite difficult to explain to, um, you know, it's people outside of it or coming to it, but it isn't just for artists who are starting out. It's about the whole of the sector contributing on a level playing field because mm -hmm. there's no, you know, you can't go above that 200 pound threshold. So everyone is brought down to the same level. But if you're a more established, well-known artist, you're going to sell quicker than other artists. Mm -hmm. Now that generates a more rapid economy. So that brings money into the system quickly. And that mm -hmm. money gets shifted across the system because they are then buying other people's work. So it's not just about, I think uh, sometimes it's mis misunderstood, sometimes in the media, where they think it's just about sort of students or, you know, mm -hmm. um, artists who are trying to get established. It's actually about all of the arts supporting one another. Yeah. And that's, that's the generosity thing, which I'm constantly trying to remind everybody <laughs> of. <laughs> we'll help you with that. No, it's, it's, it's great. And the fact that, you know, so many people are sharing it, the growth, the fact that, yeah. you know, we are now able to share it as well because it's just one of these things that can snowball and grow. And um, it's brilliant. Mm. Um, and people can find it on Instagram, isn't it? And on your website as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the platform is on Instagram. So it's uh, at um, our support play is the account where all the information is held for how to do it. And, but it, all you've actually got to do is go to hashtag Art Support Pledge and you'll see over 100,000 um, images um, and posts on there. And uh, it, what helps also is when you get to the top of the page to click on recent because that gives you the um, posts that have most recently been made. Yeah. 
and yeah. if you go on the top <laughs> posts which it normally has on when you go on instagram most of it's sold so yeah. you want to go on recent and you'll get ones that are, are more likely to be for sale i want to sort of encourage everyone that listens to this or watches this or um to go and look up the art support pledge if you're an artist and you can put work in that's great if you're a buyer and you can buy work that's great as well but if you can't do either then just like and share and sort of support in that way and um, and thank you so much for talking to us and taking this time and sharing such a a great project and also walking down memory lane of Rosal a little bit as well which is good fun for us thank you yeah. it's my pleasure